Have you ever been around somebody with a bad attitude? When somebody has a bad attitude, we like to avoid them, stay away from them. But if we're honest, sometimes even we ourselves have bad attitudes. Today we're going to look at attitudes to avoid. There's a story in Genesis, the 11th chapter, and we're going to go to the 9th verse. But this story talks about how the whole world was of one language and one speech. And they decided they were going to build this huge tower so they could reach up to the heavens and talk to God. And their heart and their attentions were not in the right place. So the Lord scattered them and confused their language. And in verse number 9 of Genesis 11, it says... Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. We are so blessed to live in this country, the United States of America. And sometimes, even though we live in this great country, we think we have to line up to the ways of the world in order to survive. Some of the attitudes that they had at Babel, and sometimes people pronounce it Babel, and sometimes people pronounce it Babel. I'm going to pronounce it Babel today. But I want to just take over the next few minutes and look at some attitudes of Babel and to see if any of these maybe we've had them and maybe we've experienced them ourselves. Or let's put it this way we know somebody that's like that. So let's look at the first one. Babel attitudes are revisited when people worry so much about their own needs and they fail to realize that all the good gifts come from God. In other words, this is us always putting ourselves number uno. What should be first? The Bible says it in Matthew, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God has to be first. The Bible says in Philippians, you need to know how to be a base. You need to learn how to abound. You need to learn how to be content in every circumstance. So don't always put yourself first. God has to be number one in your life. And when you see it's all about you, that's really really one of these attitudes of Babel that's creeping into your life. Attitudes of of Babel are revisited when people focus more on things below rather than things above. When our focus is more on what's happening here and not really being kingdom mindset. Paul said it like this, set your mind on things above. When we focus too much on things around here, sometimes it creates idolatry in our life. And idolatry is when you put anything before God. Sometimes we can put food can be an idol. Sometimes sports can be an idol. Sometimes it's a person can be an idol in in our lives. Let me tell you, there's nothing that can satisfy you like having a relationship with Jesus. He said it best when he said, he is the way, the truth, and the life. So don't put anything before God. Make sure God is always number one. Babel attitudes are revisited when we focus on our selfish interest instead of the kingdom of God. It's all about me. So one of the ways that we do this, and, and I'm going to just, just probably step on a little toes here for a minute, and that's okay. But do you know the average Christian spends more on dog food than they do giving to the church? Do you know 90% of Christians do not even tithe to their local church? As a matter of fact, a statistic was, set, was, was done. It says, if every American Christian went on welfare, received just $4,800 a year, but tithed on, it, tithed on it, church giving would increase by 50%. We need to be faithful. We need to be loyal and understand when we invest in the kingdom of God, it is going to have an eternal impact. It's okay to have a nice house and drive a nice car. It's okay to build your portfolio. But understand, Jesus came on the scene and he said, Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where things can be lost, things can be stolen. And it's okay to do those things, but understand, God has to be first. Be faithful in giving. I heard a preacher say it one time and I liked it. He said, I could tell how committed you are 
to God by just looking at your bank statement. Put God first. Babel attitudes are revisited when we focus and we fight for our own desires. We make it all about us. It's about serving God, serving others. You should be last. In other words, the Bible says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So if you're always trying to put yourself first in the kingdom, you're actually last. There's a pathway to self-destruction and that's when you make it all about you. When you come to Jesus and you put him first and you put others first, it'll lead you to a path of joy and peace. A couple more Babel attitudes, I like to call them. Babel attitudes are revisited when we are so stubborn and we hold to our own opinions and we will not receive correction from God. Listen, we have to remain humble and teachable and we have to understand the word of God is true. Your opinion does not matter if it goes against the word of God. Nobody likes to be corrected. You know why it is? Because every one of us has this thing called an ego. An ego. And some of us have big egos. Some of us have little egos. And what is the problem with correction? The problem is, is we have to admit that we are wrong. Humble pie does not taste good. But we have to let our ego go. And it's okay sometimes to receive correction. It's okay all the time to see, receive correction when it's needed from the Word of God. God, correct us. I would challenge you just to pray a challenging prayer, even right now, and say, God, if there's anything in my life that needs corrected, tell me now. Show it to me. Speak it to me. And it, 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 it's an act of humility by humbling ourselves before Him and saying, God, empty me. I'm emptying myself before you. And if anything needs corrected, Lord, I'm not, I don't want to have this big ego, but I want to come to you in faith. And I want to get on my knees. And I want to say, God, if there's anything that needs corrected, correct it now. Babel attitudes are revisited when we live more in fear than walk in faith. You know, there's a lot of confusion going on in the world. There's a lot of things culturally that's going, that's wrong in the world today. But let me tell you, it's something that's true and it always will be true. And it was true before any of us was even here on earth. And it's going to be true if the Lord tarries and all of us are not on this earth. Guess what? The word of God is what is true. His word is true. And the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. Let me tell you, we're, we're still in this pandemic. A lot of crazy things going on. But understand, when we have faith and trust in God, He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And learn to rely on Him and get the Word of God in your heart. Find some life verses. Whether it be Philippians 4.13, I'll give you one right now. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Let Him be your strength. Because when you don't rely on Him, you will become weak. Babel attitudes are revisited when we are influenced by the popular opinions of today. Let me tell you this. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of media coverage about things. Let me tell you, God's word is what is true. The Bible says, do not conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you can prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. God has a plan for you. Don't be influenced by all the negativity out there, but hold on to what God says about you and God wants to do for you and what God wants to do through you couple more here Babel attitudes are revisited we think that a one-time spiritual moment in our lives will carry us through the rest of our lives I can't tell you how many times I've seen people come to an altar and surrender their lives to Christ and then they get up and leave and they never follow after Christ 
It's not about a one-time experience, and that experience is important and value it, but it's about a daily relationship with God. It's about pursuing Him. It's about following after Him. It's about living by His Spirit and letting Him influence every decision, every area of your life. It's about being filled with His Spirit and walking in His ways. It's more than a one-time experience. It's a daily relationship. I'm going to repeat that. It's more than about a one-time experience, but it's a daily relationship with God. Babel attitudes are revisited. We lack a fear of God, and we fear men more than we do God. Let me tell you, one day we'll all stand before Him, and we will give an account. No one's going to escape it, no one's going to avoid it, but every one of us will stand before our Creator someday. And my goal has always been and always will be, I want to hear Him say, well done, good and faithful servant. The last thing is Babel attitudes are revisited when we try to find another way except Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, there are a lot of religions out there. There's a lot of philosophies out there. There's a lot of people that say you can find spiritual and inner peace through this and this. And let me just tell you, there's a lot of confusion. But I'm here to tell you there's only one way, and that way is Jesus Christ. I'm a little concerned sometimes how people are trying to join religions together and join thoughts together and join this denomination. Let me just put it plain. There's only one way, and it's Jesus. And if you don't go that way, you will be lost. That's not a popular opinion, but that's the truth. And this preacher loves you enough to tell you the truth. You need Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Religion is men trying to reach God, but Christianity is God reaching down through his son, Jesus Christ, to each and every one of us. Wise men Solomon wrote these words, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is the way of death, is the way of death. So how do we overcome these attitudes? And I hope in just, in giving you a few of these that you could say, yeah, maybe I've seen myself, maybe I've been, had that attitude before. How do we overcome this process? It's all through Jesus. What Jesus did at the cross and Pentecost, I talked to you about this tower that was built and how the languages were confused. Well, that whole process basically got reversed on the day of Pentecost. There's a few parallels here I want to give you as we close. The day of Pentecost reversed this process. At, at Babel, the people call, came together in one place to build a tower in order to reach the heavens. Acts 2 at once says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one place in one accord. Here people are together again. At the Tower of Babel, he confused the languages. But at the day of Pentecost, he unleashed a heavenly language. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. See the unity there. They were in one mind, one accord, one focus. And it was all for the glory of God. It was all for the glory of God. Pentecost people said, I want to make him famous. Babel, these people said, I want to make me famous. See the difference? In Babel, the human race was confused and spread. In Pentecost, the human race was filled and spread. We were spread because why? We were able to take the gospel to all the world. Basically, Pentecost reversed what happened at Babel. And there is one that's with us right now that is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. In closing, the message at Babel was, we are gods. The message at Pentecost, we are gods. We belong to him. Do you belong to him today? I challenge you today, in this moment right now, give your life to Christ. He is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. You're never alone as long as you have Christ.
Babel, they spoke many languages. Now you can receive this gift of the Spirit. And there's a language of the Spirit. And God will fill you with that. But it starts with having a relationship with Him and acknowledging what I said. What are the Babel attitudes? Is saying, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm wrong. I need forgiveness. I need you to wash me. I need you to renew me. I acknowledge that I have sinned against you. And saying, Lord, I need forgiveness. And when the Bible says when you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So if you need that cleansing today, it starts at an altar of repentance. And that altar can be right now, wherever you are, if you're in your car, if you're in your home, wherever you're at. That altar's right there right now, and it's you saying, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. And let me tell you, he will take all the chaos in your life. He will take all the anxiety in your life, all the fear in your life, and he'll replace it with peace, with peace. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time that you've given us together. And Lord, I just pray right now for those who for watching this now, those who will even watch this later. Lord, that we just make you our Lord and Savior in our life. Lord, we just give you the keys and say, from now on, we're going to let you drive. And Lord, we just pray that we know that you will forgive us of our sins. And Lord, we pray you will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and your fire. Because that's what keeps us. And Lord, we just pray that we will keep our attitudes right in this journey with you. And when we see these Babel attitudes creep up in us, that it'll also, the Holy Spirit will rise up in us and we'll confess them to you. Because, Lord, we want to please you. We want to walk in your ways. And we want to do like they did in the book of Acts. Take this gospel to all the world. And we can do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, this is Pastor Jeff. Thank you for watching this Hope Church video. If you would like some more awesome content, please click the subscribe button on my left. Also, click the video below for some great Hope Church videos. Thank you for your support, and we hope you're blessed by our content. God bless.